Hi chess fans, this is King's Executor and today I want to talk about the Alakine and if white plays two knight c3. This is quite a solid approach by white and um, there have been many moves here. There have been um, there has been d5 and uh, there is also the old Alakine suggestion by Alakine himself e6. Um, here you can try after d4 to transpose back into the classical French with which is a positional opening and it's really easy to play this opening because it's not the Vinova uh, variation which is highly theoretical and uh, here you just get your knight out your queen out bishop e7 maybe castle short and f6 at some moment and uh, you break down white center so you should be playing the French here this is my recommendation quite a solid opening um, on the other hand um, white has an option here which is e5 which he doesn't have in the regular French um, uh, move order Let's look at it after e4, e6, d4, d5. There is no knight on f6 to be pushed beforehand. So let's drop back to this position. We're playing e6 on move 2. And after e5, if white denies us playing the solid French, this is what I want to talk about today. Knight d5 on move 3. Now white has a choice in taking that knight, which isn't bad at all. I mean blitz players often do that because they see black gets his pawns doubled, but we're gonna talk about this in a minute. I like to play this way. Um, if white plays um, modestly here with d4, you can just double white's pawns and kind of play a French setup uh, with c5 or d5. But I like c5 here in this position a little bit more. Um, I mean, it's easily uh, said that you can either take, sorry, take this pawn. You can play d6. Um, and it's okay. So I like to play c5 here. That opens the queen's file, uh, the queen's diagonal immediately. And after bishop d3, d5, and white cannot take en passant without um, opening lines for the black pieces. So. Um, after, for example, qu bishop to uh, queen to g4, queen a5, taking advantage of the weakened pawn structure here. If bishop d2, um, we can play queen a4. This pins this pawn, which is not that important, of course. Um, well, okay, it is important because the queen is watching over g7. And the bishop uh, cannot take on c5 without allowing the queen to take on g7. So the queen is pinning the pawn. But more importantly is that uh, this pawn is indirectly under a lot of pressure. Knight f3 would lose a pawn here after c4. And queen takes c2. And after rook c1, just a defensive move exchanging the active white queen. In this position, uh, if white s uh, sees that, well, knight um, rook c1 uh, doesn't help that much. Um, you can even chase the queen first of all. You can push c4, denying white this active diagonal and then take on a2 
So White has a lot of problems after Queen A4 uh, defending his queenside pawns. So this is what you do if your opponent plays d4 in this position d4 and if he takes that knight which uh, most players do after d4 we're gonna play d6 now we're gonna uh, dismantle white's center with this uh, double pawn and the way to do it is not just to take immediately if you are allowed but to apply some pressure and develop your pieces. If knight f3, um, this is the normal move here, then you can just play knight c6. But what if white tries something more ambitious with f4? Then you take, undoubling your pawns, and this pawn push is kind of weakening in this position. Uh, white hasn't developed really and pushing um, three pawns having made four pawn moves in the opening isn't really that uh, that smart oh I'm sorry isn't really that smart let's go back takes and if the F pawn takes this is really bad then you can check the king and he's gotta go to E2 um, g3 would just lose the rook. So king e2 would be forced. Then you can open up um, the game to attack the king. If knight f3, just pin this knight, developing. If uh, bishop e3, knight out. Well, white cannot take on c5 because of castles and black has an overwhelming position um, threatening to take on e5, push d4, take on c5, so black is winning this position here. Let's drop back. We take on d5 and if white takes on e5 with a d-pawn which is more solid then you get your bishop out to the weakened diagonal and if queen e2 to trying to um, attack the c5 bishop and then castle long you can castle short bishop e3 d4 attacking the bishop castles pinning the pawn to the queen queen d5 attacking the a pawn king b1 bishop e6 attacking it again and b3 is the <coughs> excuse me only move here if uh, c4 we have this check winning the bishop so b3 is the only move knight c6 knight f3 now this bishop e6 move force this weakening uh, this dark squares weakening um, move so the bishop has done its job really on that square I'm sorry after bishop after knight f3 bishop g4 because the bishop has done its work by provoking this weak pawn after bishop c1 maybe defending these dark squares knight b4 and the best move here is queen c4 trying to exchange the black queen of course white is in the defense defendancy here and you just play rook fd1 uh, d8 well there is nothing you can get uh with um 
getting the queen to another square. Um, let's see if queen c6, then you, you know, we have knight takes d4. So instead we get our rook into the center here, defending the queen, and after a3, trying to kick the knight, we can exchange the queens and knight d5 and uh, well that knight has to be taken it's a really uh, menacing knight here takes takes and well the position is equal and um, I think black's position is just fine if um, c4 here we can just drop back <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, white uh, black has a bishop pair, so I like this position for black. So this happens after f4, d5, and d takes e. Now let's look at the let's call it a main line knight f3 knight c6 of course the bishop can pin the knight here but I mean you can you can just play then um, after bishop b5 you can play bishop d7 unpinning and well then the e5 pawn again is under pressure and uh, I don't think that white wants to surrender the bishop pair. So bishop f4 to reinforce the e-pawn. Bishop e7 trying to get castled. And well, after that, uh, you can even play, well, you would take and after this recapture play f6 maybe cuz the e6 square is covered by the bishop and uh the pawns are just not that strong in in the center for white so there are still some french ideas here with this f6 push but you do that after you undoubled your pawns. If black, if white tries to deny black uh, castling immediately and tr force him to lose time by moving his bishop again, well, we uh, achieved our goal in undoubling our pawns and we exchange pieces and have a satisfactory position. If queen e2 checks a uh, check here, then bishop e6 blocking and um, developing a piece. The bishop on e f4 is still attacked, so takes we take with the queen. And after castling long, we can castle short. See the bishop is blocked in, and the c pawn is uh, ready to be pushed soon to open the rook's file and I believe that black has slightly the better chances in attacking the uh, white king and because of this hemmed in bishop I think that uh, white's attack is a little bit slower and more difficult so let's recap after knight f6 and two knight c3, e6, and if you're allowed to, after d4, play and transpose back to the classical French. And if you're denied doing that, then you can just um, either play the f French uh, type of position another way around and 
then after bishop d2, queen a4. Or after knight d5 and takes, takes, d4, play d6, and just attack this pawn on e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop f4, bishop e7, and you're fine. Takes, takes, check, takes, takes, castles, castles. Of course, you can castle long here as well, but if you're able to play c5, because here is a pawn, you know, here is a pawn, so you can force uh, the opening of the c file, and afterwards this bishop gets play, because you can then push your d5 pawn, because you get rid of this blockader. And then uh, this bishop is going to contribute to the um, queenside attack. So it doesn't look that bad for black in this position. Objectively, it's equal, and this is an uh, easy to play position. It's solid, and this is the way to go. So after knight c3, you play e6. Thanks.